Now, welcome to the world of aphids. Now, I'm working with a particular species of aphids called Mysis porsicae. This is a normal um, pest species that is common, commonly dangerous throughout the world. Um, aphids are coming from the order of true bugs. Characteristics for the structurally common mouth parts and feeding strategies on plants. Aphids are more closely related to scaled insects, um, including cicadas and also other families of white flies, plant hoppers, and leaf hoppers. Now, aphids can function as pests a variety of different ways, one of which including their fast reproduction rates. Now, aphids in certain seasons reproduce asexually and they don't rely on male fertilization. This allows for quick reproduction rates, not waiting around for male fertilization. So this picture denotes a single aphid and all of its progeny. As you can see here, one single aphid can produce um, a lot of babies. Basically, in every adult aphid contains up to three generations of progeny in their abdomen. That is because for every daughter that is born out of the aphid, each daughter um, contains its own sets of ovaries that can allow for increased reproduction. Second way is through sooty mold. Um, basically, when the aphids poop on the leaves, it provides a hotbed of growth for mold to develop such a sooty mold. This mold decomposes the poop as well as the plant material, um, forming dark spots on the plant, thus inhibiting um, tech plant techniques such as photosynthesis. Also, aphids could develop wings in certain situations and therefore thus acting as viral vectors, spreading around viruses from different places and infecting different plants. Aphids can also in, uh, infect a whole host of vegetable crops, including squash, cucumber, pumpkin, melons, and etc. Now, a common theme in biology is that structure determines function. Now, the structure of the Abdomen, rostrum, and the compound eye are what gen, um, engenders most of its um, function. The, if, the abdomen, as I mentioned before, is a big part of the aphid, containing up to three generations of progeny. The rostrum, or its mouth part, it uses to probe the plant and then suck the sap out of the plant in the phylum of the leaf. The compound eye's characteristics is a characteristic um, phenotype for many insects. Many insects. Um, the compound eye contains several repeating units of photoreceptor cells, which also leads to the eye function. Now, you might say we can control this pest, this dangerous pest, by using normal um, um, pest control standards such as pesticide. The problem with pesticides is that it can infect or affect every single part of the environment from runoff to the air to the, and especially get into the food that we eat. They can also include carcinogens. Now, researchers have developed um, plants, BT crops, to fight against these peps, pests, but um, insects and other bacteria have since developed resistance. My project focuses on a new, safer way for pest control to control this aphid pest, involving RNA silencing. Now, this picture is basically a depiction of the central dogma theory, where we go from DNA to RNA to protein. Now, my project my project focuses on kind of disrupting this pathway in the aphids as a kind of control for their population. What do I mean? Now, RNA is normally single-stranded in the cell, so we can develop complementary RNA strands, which when we introduce them into the aphid cell, it can bind to its complement, thus creating double-stranded RNA. This double-stranded RNA will then block normal translation patterns in the cell and lead to gene knockdown. Also, this double-stranded RNA can cue a host of different activities in the cell, including endonuclease activity and other RNA interference machinery, which can also degrade itself and the mRNA also. Now, how we use RNA silencing in the project is through two different ways. One is with VIGS, virus-induced gene silencing, and the other one is with morpholino, morpholino mediated, mediated gene silencing. Now, the overall idea of VIGS is that we're using the natural relationship between agrobacterium and plants to then spread around our double-stranded RNA 
so that when aphids, when we place aphids on the plant, the aphids can take up this double-stranded RNA, which can bind to its complement um, in the aphids and also control the population that way. So basically, we have a design of vectors containing our double-stranded RNA gene targets. We would then transform them into the agrobacterium and then inoculate them into younger leaves and then prepare them for plant assay analysis. Now these are pictures of the normal setup. We have, we set up a PDS control, photoline desaturase positive control where we would expect a discoloration in the leaves as a kind of confirmation that our Vigs um, experiment was set up right. Um, here depicts all of the treated plants with, double, with our double-stranded RNA. Here are pictures of the inoculation on the underside of the leaf. And here we set up cages where we place 25 aphids on, the, on each section of the leaf, basically two cages per plant. Um, and then we would monitor by counting, we will monitor the aphids by counting up the population each day and, and then determining if, if the, when they take up double-stranded RNA that we put in the plant, if that affects their survivorship. Now the results show a general trend, but this is naturally as expected since the population of the aphids um, would normally decrease. But I would like you to pay attention to this um, line right here, um, gene target um, 16183. These are horizontal transfer genes that we found in the aphid that we wanted to work with, which the function of them are not known. Now this shows a p-value from the control of 0.06, even though it was not significant under 95% significance level, we saw it decreased the most out of all the gene targets. Thus, we did qPCR to confirm this. As you can see for target 16183, we have um, significant um, decrease in gene expression um, of the aphid um, this confirms that the aphids were actually taking up this double-stranded RNA and then this double-stranded RNA was actually reducing um, these genes in them. Um, similarly for 15724, which um, it shows even more of a decrease. Um, and the interesting thing is for target 5167, the, tar the gene expression was actually upregulated um, from the control which can also happen because the aphids can also overcompensate for the genes that we're knocking down. Now the second way we introduce RNA silencing to the aphids is through morpholino. Morpholinos are modified um, nucleotides that we would put into the cell. Basically, instead of a normal ribose ring, we have a morpholine ring. Instead of a phosphate group, we have a modified phosphate group, phosphorodiamidate. Now, how morpholino functions as RNA silencing? Basically, we have a steric blockade. So, the normal, so this is the normal mRNA, this is the PMO. The, the modified um, nucleotide is actually much bigger than a normal nucleotide and therefore causes a steric blockade and then will not allow it to go into pro not allow it to, to translate into protein. The way our lab, um, or the way my project used morpholino is through splice recognition sites. Now we will target morpholinos to attach to the complement strands of exon intron junctions of the aphid genome, where we would interrupt the normal RNA splicing techniques. Um, this allows for the introduction of potential introns that are not supposed to be there that are normally spiced out, thus greatly modifying the gene. This represents the whole entire um, protein genome, white genome. Um, basically, everything in blue is our exons and white and black are the introns. Well, we, we designed a morpholino target for exon three, intron three junction, um, denoted by the inside of the red circle. Basically, Disrupting this, disrupting this junction right here will p potentially allow for the introduction of this intron and thus modifying the gene. Now protein Y confers, um, is used for um, eye phenotype and eye function and particularly eye color. Now any moderation or any um, 
or disruption to this gene will cause a lighter phenotype in aphids. Um, normal eye color in aphids are dark red, so any modulation, any um, disruption will cause a lighter eye phenotype. There are different ways we would administer the morpholino that we targeted. One is through the use of dye cages. They mainly involve um, basically um, sugar water sandwiches where we would um, put it on parafilm, put the aphids on them, um, containing our morpholino. We, we use microinjection. Basically, we're injecting our morpholino into um, abdomens of the aphids, and we use topical delivery, where we place aphids on plants and place morpholino on top of their backs. And we put them on, the, um, on leaves and then put them on petri dishes. We would then monitor their eye, eye color changes through microscope. Now, what did we find? Here, let me dim the lights a little bit. Now, as you can see, the, the, this is the normal phenotype, very darkish red eye color. Um, from the control, we didn't see that, from the treatment, microinjected aphids, we didn't see that much of a difference compared to the control. But over the um, course of a few days, we started to see um, formations of little light patches. Now, interestingly, when I was working with, when I was using topical delivery on the aphids, under the water control, we saw the formation of this light red patch compared to the outer of the eye, outer layer of the eye, as you can see denoted in the middle. Even though this was the water control and we didn't administer the morpholino for them, we suspect that it might be a natural mutation or probably a product of cross-contamination between morpholino treatments, since the aphids like to crawl between plates. We're still in the process of genotyping this to confirm if morpholino, if they actually took up morpholino or any natural mutations. But this is kind of the mutated phenotype we were looking for in our treated ones. Um, working with microinjected um, aphids, we saw that the morpholino could be toxic to the aphids, mainly because we saw this formation of eye, of this eye. We see it's much um, shrunken, and we saw changes in body color where the aphids were turned from red to green. So thus deducing, we thought uh, morpholino concentration we're using were toxic. So we decided to use serial dilutions. For um, 150X, for the more, most diluted ones, we didn't see much of a difference, as you can see, dark red um, phenotype. But for the less diluted ones, we saw formations of patches, as you can see from this left um, half of the eye compared to this eye, also over here. It's definitely hard to see, but we saw promising results from these phenotypes. We used qPCR to confirm this, that our gene was actually knocked down or modified. From the microinjected 1X ones, compared to our microinjected control, we saw a, about a 60% decrease in gene expression for protein white, which confirms some of the phenotypes we're using. But these results are not um, all, we, we cannot use just these results to kind of say that um, protein white confers um, a change in um, eye color. We have to do more tests because we're not sure, as you can see in the control for topical delivery, we're not sure that um, it can, we're not sure if natural mutations can cause this phenotype, and we're also not sure if other stresses that we don't know about can cause this phenotype also. I would like to thank Dr. George Jander, my PI, and my mentor, Dr. Hongling Feng, and for every, part, every member of the Dr. Jander lab, which are not depicted on the screen, but have also been um, very helpful in my studies. Um, I remember working with Dr. Honglin, my mentor, in the basement with the aphids. We were discussing about um, research and science. We were discussing about how sometimes, how sometimes, like, we're not sure how the aphids respond to our treated ones because we can't actually see what goes on the, in the cell. We started talking about other things and why our research is important. And definitely from this experience, opened up my eyes into things I've never 
actually known about science and its re resiliency in insects. Thank you. I'll take any questions. Right, so the genes we selected for were actually horizontal transfer genes that we found that were transferred from other bacteria to the aphids. We decided to work with these genes because these genes are not present in other insects. They were mostly transferred from bacterium. So we decided to work with these genes because in nature we wouldn't want to use genes that involve other insects because if we man manipulate the genes in aphids, the insects that prey upon the aphids can also be disrupted that way also. So we wanted to use safer genes. 